Praise God. I'd like to thank you today uh, from the kindness of my heart, and I thank, thank you for allowing me to come in to all you viewers out there. I praise and magnify God. My name is Daryl Breedlove. I'm Minister Daryl Breedlove, and I love talking about God's Word. Just to let you know about myself, I've been living saved for over 15 years. I've been called to the ministry uh, uh, probably about 14 years plus. God has truly been good to me, and God will be good to you if you give your life to him. If you would follow me, I have a Facebook account. It's up under Daryl Bree Love, just as simple as that. Uh, also, I have an email address, uh, and it's a small case uh, letters. If you have your pen and paper and take it down, I would love to hear from you uh, as well and, and, and to have some of your prayer requests uh, forms or uh, whatever you want to fill out uh, to uh, be a prayer partner. Um, it's called Take It Back by Force Ministries at gmail.com. Let me spell it out for you. That's small case letters once again. Uh, that's T A K E I T B Y F O R C E M I N I S T R Y at G M A I L period C O M. And that's take it back, take it by force ministries at gmail.com. Once again, that's take it by force ministries at gmail. Dot com And you can follow me on Facebook. Again, uh, you would be able to find me on Facebook up under the name of Daryl Breedlove. I hail out of the city of Denton. And I thank God for you viewers that have tuned in and allowed me to come in uh, to your homes. Uh, I want to thank God that you're able to see because God's word is spreading uh, in this hour. God wants to spread his word, not only to the righteous man, but to the sinner man. And when I mean man, I'm meaning uh, woman, boy, and girl. Praise God. I just thank God for you allowing me this time. Let us get into prayer. Father God, I just thank you right now. God, I thank you because you're omniscient. God, I thank you because you're omnipresent. God, I just praise you right now. I ask that you touch the people, God. Touch the ones, God, that's up under the sound of my voice, uh, that's viewing this telecast. I, God, I ask that you touch them and, and change their lives, God, uh, by a spoken word. Speak a word to us uh, this morning. God, thank you in the name of Jesus. Speak a word. Change our situation around God. Reverse the move, God, uh, in the name of Jesus. So many people have got bad report, but God, we come to bring good news today. God, from on high. God, I ask that you bless your people right now in the name of Jesus, God. Touch that man, God. Touch that woman, God. Touch that boy, girl, God. Help them right now. Give them joy down in their soul, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. God is certainly a good God. I tell you, when I gave my life to Christ, there's no other God that I would not serve but this God here. This is a wonderful God. This is a, 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 a king of king God. This is a, a Lord of Lord gods, and I just thank you for it right now. God took me to uh, the book of John, St. John. John is a, is a good book. Uh, John talks about in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and 
the life was the light of man. How many can see uh, past uh, uh, their communities and, and look what's going on in the land? Darkness seemed like it has covered the land, but I come to tell you God has a remedy today. God has his holy word. God has his representation of people being a witness for him in a land of darkness. You, you may be the only one that's the light in your own family. You may be the only one that's on your job that's living safe, but if you would be that light that sitteth upon the hill and shine it down, oh God, it, it, the people would look at that and then they would say to you, they would ask you a simple question, what must I do to be saved? save. It's so many that now they don't know the way. They don't even know the way. But we have to teach them the way. We have to show them that we are the light of the world. You can have this uh, joy that I have. You can have that healing and, and blessing power, that, 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 that promising power that God said that he would give to his people. He said, beloved, I wish above all things that you be in health as your soul prosper. So many folks are looking for prosperity. They, they're running out to all things that, that's not godly, but even they're running out to things to try to bless their family. But it's the way that you're going out of it. You got to go. You have to seek ye first the kingdom of God. The Bible said in Matthew 6 and 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness will be added unto you. And so here we are. We, we're, 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 we're light of the world. We have Christ. And the Bible said in John 1 and 5, it said, and the light shineth in darkness. What, what is darkness, brother? Darkness is when folks around you are living everything under the sun, but not following the pathway of Jesus Christ himself. He said, I am the truth, the way, and the life. No man come unto me but through me. You have to go through Jesus Christ. You have to have the light of the world. Darkness all around us, when, when men are hating one another, when, 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 when you can't find a positive word for anybody to speak into your life. Darkness. Darkness. But we are the light. We come in to a dark situation and, 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 and the situation changed suddenly, immediately. Impact, healing come, sickness is removed, cancer is removed, sugar diabetes removed. Because you are the light. You have Christ in your life. Here it brings us to our text today in John 3. Talking about Nicodemus, Nicodemus being a, a Pharisee, if you don't mind me just kind of uh, uh, breezing through uh, the text. But I'm in St. John chapter 3 and verse number 1. I may not read it to you, but at the same time, I give you a little synopsis of it. I give you a little summary of what I'm talking about. Here you have a Pharisee, a, a, a man named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Then saying, came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. He already recognized what we were talking about, that darkness and uh, uh, recognizing the light, uh, understanding that anointing, because it, it's the anointing these days that's going to destroy the yoke. Where you see so much hatred in the land. You, 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 you see the betrayal. Betrayal uh, 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 people of God is, it has run rapid all over this land. I mean, it has run rapid. You got men that's truth breakers. They're heady. They're high-minded. But Nicodemus recognized that Jesus was sent from God. He understood that no man could do this as left 
unless, uh, forgive me, praise God, unless he come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. It's some things that God is going to anoint you that you're going to have to walk in to a situation and, and, and speak life to a dead situation. You're going to have to be just like Jesus was in John chapter 11 when he stood at the tombs of Lazarus. And he stood there in his humanity. He stood there as Messiah God and he spoke. Sometimes you just going to have to speak it. You have to speak to yourself in confidence as Philippians 1 and 6 said, being confident in this very thing. Not saying be conceited, but you got to recognize with the boldness of Christ, uh, the power of God, that you are the light of the world. You have to understand that Philippians said, being confident in this very thing, that he that had begun a good work in you shall perform it. So you may have to walk into that hospital room where a loved one is lying there, a family member is lying there, and you have to speak to that situation. I'm telling you right now, God can. God did it for me in a sick room. God did it for me on my bed of affliction. God spoke to me and said, live, son. Live and not die. Bad situation. The doctor had gave me a bad report. You know, I, I, I had had, a, uh, the doctor had assumed that I had a heart attack. But at the same time, God ministered to me. There on my backside, when my wife wasn't there, my children weren't there, no one I could contact. But the only one I could contact was God. That's all I had. I didn't have uh, anything else, but I had my, my, my praying mind. I had a mind to pray to God. And so sometimes you have to pray to God and, and, and ask God for that power. You got to ask God for, for that, that healing anointing. You got to ask God uh, for that, that strategy, that, that know-how uh, uh, to bring that situation to pass. You, you, you have to stand in agreement with, with, with our Savior, Jesus Christ, saying, I can live saved. So many folks will give up on you where you, you, you're not going to make it. You done ran down there to that church. You done gave your life. And baby, I promise you by Wednesday, you'll give up on God. But I tell you what, we serve a holy God. We serve a sanctified God. Uh, Jeremiah had got upset. Jeremiah had got to where he was discouraged in his ministry. You may be discouraged because you see so much darkness in the land. But, God, but Jeremiah asked God, is that not a bomb in Gideon? That bomb was a, almost a, something of a, of a healing potion. That, 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 that at the same time, the people of God, they weren't being completely healed. Summer had passed and, and, and Jeremiah was wondering, why God? Why are your people facing what they're facing? But he said, Jeremiah, I got a remnant. He said, in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, he said, if my people, that means you, beloved, if, if you consider to have the blood on the post, the blood on top of your head to the soles of your feet, you are God's people. The Bible said, confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that you are saved and you are God's people. You can call those things that be not as though they were. If my people that are called by my name should humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will heal from, I will hear from heaven. And then I heal the land. We need healing because there's so much darkness. It's so much of a dead situation. And Jeremiah had got upset, the weeping prophet had got upset at the time in, 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 in Jerusalem. He got upset in Babylon. He was upset because the people were slackly, but halfway being healed. 
But I come to tell you today, baby, God don't want you halfway. He wants you all the way. Hear my voice and hear me good. Look at me, people of God. Don't you dare put that, uh, put that TV down. Don't you dare turn that station. Don't you dare move from this telecast. Hear me, God. God wants you healed all the way. He don't want you just bound to all types of ungodly things, where it be cigarettes, where it be uh, fornication, adultery, uh, 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 whatever spirits you're dealing with, sexuality. God wants you healed. God wants you to live abundant life. God wants you to live a righteous life. Nicodemus being a ruler, a man of influence in the land, a, a, a politician type uh, individual, if you would, in this day and time. And he came to Jesus by night and said, no man can do this. I'm seeing folks being, being restored, uh, uh, Jesus. I'm, I'm seeing folks that, that had stuff to be ate up in their life and, and to have been rejected in their own homes and, and to be lied on, to be been betrayal. Uh, 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 and I've seen you speak life to them. And, 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 and he said, no man can do this except God be with him. I, I want to, I want to uh, tell you that if you get God in your life, there's not a mountain you can't climb. If you get God in your life, there's, there's not a valley that you can't go through. David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of a shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. And God was with Jesus. Jesus, in return, responded back to him in John 3. Said, Jesus answered and said unto him, verily, verily, I say unto thee, Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That's, that's the whole purpose of our life. We want to see the kingdom of God. For in the days of John the Baptist preaching, the kingdom of God suffered violent. But guess what? The violent take it back by force. I mean, that force that Jesus was talking about, those peacemakers, uh, 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 the ones that had that beatitude, that, that would get on the, their knees and, and pray until uh, the earth shake. The, the ones that would get on their knees and pray until the kingdom of God came. John the Baptist came on the scene and said uh, to the people that the kingdom of God is at hand. And if you don't realize it now, we are in those last days. But I tell you what, for the people of God, for those that are going back to heaven with God, the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus was telling Nicodemus, you got to be born again in order to see this kingdom. It's not going to be your influence. It's not going to be uh, your money situation. It's going to be that you be born again, that your heart be transformed, that your mind be renewed. You're going to have to be born again. You got to fight for your life. You got to fight for uh, uh, the acceptance of righteousness. The kingdom of God is at hand. People of God, the kingdom of God is at hand. As I was saying earlier, you, you, you're seeing betrayal. Not only you're seeing betrayal by uh, uh, friends and uh, co-workers, uh, whatever you may. But I tell you, 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 if you get God with you, if you get the comforter, you'll be able to walk through that situation. You'll be that light that'll change individuals. I've been in places, I've been encountered with men that when the crisis have hit their lives, they turned around and said, what must I do to be saved? How can I have that hope and faith? How can I see as the way you see, Brother Bree Love? How can I have that abundant life? And I asked them, do you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross, but he didn't stay there. He got up on the third day that you, my beloved friend, 
that you, my beloved brother and sister, that you, my beloved, would have that abundant life, that you would be the light of the world. Nicodemus was a man of influence. But Jesus told him that you must be born again. Nicodemus in return came back and asked the question of how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water. In other words, you got to be baptized. This is what the Bible said. And of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Baby, you won't be able to enter in with the same old spirit, that same old belief system, that, that mediocre uh, uh, spirit, that uh, complacency spirit. You got to want more for your life. You got to fight for your life. Christ is wanting to do that for you. That which is born of flesh, flesh is not going to enter in. Flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is of the spirit. He told a woman at the well, and he said, that those that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. It's going to have to be some truth to your life. You'll find now one person to say one thing and they mean another. Show up one way on a, a average day and then come Sunday, they show up as, as they was a believer. But God don't look at the outward appearance. God looks at a man's heart, a woman's heart. God looks at the inward part. You'll see people that in the congregation and you'll see people all over the land and up and down. It tickles me to death to see them on Facebook uh, become Monday through Thursday or Friday or Saturday. They living like any and everything. But then come Sunday, they want us to talk the Bible. They want us to talk Christianity. They want to talk that they are belief. They got a form of godliness that's halfway. That's what Jeremiah was talking about. Halfway. Live and save. But God don't want half of you. God wants all of you. God wants all of you, Nicodemus. God wants all all of you, if you want that situation to turn around, if you want that child or that man or that woman, that spouse of yours to be saved, start living all the way. Let that light shine in your bedrooms. Let that light shine in your homes. Let that light shine in your community. Let that light shine wherever you go, wherever the soles of your feet tread. God promised it. God said it. And you got to believe. God promised that, that I would give it to you as I take a close to this message. You got to be born again. What are you going to do? After this telecast is over, what are you going to do? Are you going to give your life to Christ? Are you going to sit there and say, well, that's just for uh, my neighbor, or that's just for somebody else. Beloved, God wants it for you. God wants you to live that light. God wants that light to shine on you. Allow God to shine in your hearts today. Allow God to move on your behalf today. Would you do that for me, please? Would you do that not only for me, would you do that for God? Would you do it for God? Will you allow God to come in and do whatever he needs to do? I, I, I'm telling you that God will and God can. It's up to you as we pray. Father God, I thank you today. God, I ask that you turn their situation around. 
God, if they're not saved. And God, even if they're saved, God, maybe they need encouraging, God. Maybe they need to be strengthened today, God. I ask that you restore back to them everything that the canker worm, the caliper, and the locust have eaten up, God. God, give it to them. Undo that situation where the enemy has come in and try to tie it up and wrap it up, God. Loose the chains right now. Loose it right now in the name of Jesus, we pray. God, we sin, we accept you in our life. God, you are Lord of Lord and you're King of King. There's nothing too hard for you. And God, we thank you for your presence. God, we thank you for your power. God, we just praise and magnify you right now. For let's do your name. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, thank God. Beloved, we thank God for you right now. We thank you for listening and tuning in. For it was an honor and an awesome privilege to come into your homes. Any way or any form, your, your kind heart will allow me to come in. And I praise you right now. I thank God for this opportunity. Stay tuned because we'll be coming back. This is many more telecasts. This will be many more shows. And I am an evangelist. I travel preaching the gospel all up and down the highways. And whatever way God will allow me to come in, I'm willing to come in. In Jesus' name. Until then, be blessed, be healed, and be delivered and be set free. Thank you right now. Amen.